it's Kristen and happy Topic Tuesday to you. For Topic Tuesday today, we're going to have um, my quarterly installment of Mascara Madness. If you're not familiar with that, um, I have several mascaras open every single quarter. And I do that simply because I have a series about it. I, if I wasn't on YouTube, I would not have this many mascaras open at one time. But I do, so that I can come to you with several different mascaras to discuss as I said, on a quarterly basis. So I, and I throw my mascaras out every three months. Not all of these have been open for quite three months, so some of these will still be in rotation for a little while, but that's what we're doing today. One other quick note I want to say is that um, I only, and for the past few times, I've only had one or two here or there drugstore mascaras, and that is because I have a, a good amount of higher end mascaras kind of in my stash. So when I work through a few more of those, then you will see me go, I'm going to go to the store and I will get some more drugstore mascaras, but at this point I want to work through the ones that I have and use them up before they go bad. So um, before we get into mascaras, I want to talk about a couple of lash products that um, I have been using for three months or so, give or take, maybe a little bit more on one, a little bit less on another. Um, and then one that I've just used for a short period of time. So, here we go. Um, the very first one that I want to talk about, and I've shown this in a favorite, is the Anastasia Lash, Geni Lash Genius. And this is clear waterproof top coat. So I believe that I showed in one of my favorites videos, I will try to find it and link which video it was below, how I actually use this. So this is just a clear product like that. And when I very frequently, and I apologize for those of you that have heard this a million times, but when mascaras transfer on me, and you will hear me talk about that, they transfer underneath my brow bone. Um, it doesn't, I don't usually have issues smudging beneath my lower lash line when I wear mascara down there, but I do a lot of times have trouble with it on my, um, underneath my brow bone. So what I've done with this is with those kind of mascaras that I really like how they look and I want to work through them, um, I will go on the very tips and just kind of curl and pull away like that. Um, so hopefully that hand motion kind of makes sense to you. And just on the tips and that will absolutely help and stop the smudging that I get on my, um, underneath my brow bone. So the Lash Genius, I really like this. There's lots of product in here and I don't, I don't feel like this is one that would necessarily have to be tossed after three months. So I'm going to keep this around a little bit yet. All right, the next thing that I want to talk about is the Estee Lauder Little Black Primer. And this says Tint, Amplify, and Set. So this has a brush like this. Kind of a natural bristly brush but with a curve to it. And this works well. I don't find this to be as miraculous um, for me as it is for some other people, but I think that is because I already have a natural curl to my lash. I don't use a lash curler or anything. My lashes just kind of go like that naturally. Now I've heard Emily and a few other people really talk about how um, this holds their curl for them once they've curled. I think Lisa maybe as well, but anyway. So I know that lots of people love this. What I was hoping it would do for me, and it, it does a little bit, but Sometimes if I use a good primer, it will help mascaras to stop transferring. I mean, that's always my goal for me is to be able to use any mascara I want, whether it transfers or not. Because if I purchase it, I want to work through it. Anyway, so this I do think um, helps a little bit, but I don't find that it, um, it stops transfer completely. So what's nice about this, though, is that because of the brush and the way that it wiggles through the lashes and that sort of thing, it does give you a nice sort of just a tint natural look. If you want to throw something just on quick, quickly, my lashes are very blonde. So in order for me to have them show up in any way, shape, or form, I, you know, I definitely have to put something on them. And so this is nice for that as well. I'm not sure that I would repurchase this lash primer, um, but I've enjoyed working through it. So... The Lash Genius I would definitely repurchase. Um, and one like full-on fail, I kept meaning to mention this in a, in, the, uh, in a video, but this is the Urban Decay Mascara Resurrection Reboot Refresh Renew. So it looks like this. I showed this in a haul and I, all the, based on the comments, I knew it wasn't going to be good. <laughs> so it looks like this. So first of all, the brush, the way this brush is. Okay, back up. You're supposed to be able to use this to kind of refresh your mascara. If it's the end of the day and you want to use it before you go out to grab a cocktail or, um, you know, if you're going to go to a late meeting or, you know, whatever the case is, you would be able to use this to kind of refresh it and bring it back to life. This doesn't do that. For me, it kind of just gunks up my lashes. Um, 
and I think part of it is because the brush is so wide apart and I think I think their intention was good there but I don't know it doesn't really work well on the lashes I can't really get it down into the base of my lashes to try to to try to um, really refresh it and, and I, I don't know I don't know I don't get it it's a full-on fail full-on fail for me I tell you so as far as mascaras go I feel like the lighting today for some reason is very sunsetty although it is sunrisey at 6 a.m. right now at any rate um, I have five mascaras today the first one is a I'll go I'll go ahead with my drugstore first and I can't remember why I ended up pulling this out but I've had lots of people ask me lately what my favorite drugstore mascara is now I haven't tried a lot of the new ones but my drug my favorite one is still the covergirl professional super thick lash mascara this is old packaging so it's the last one that I had in this old packaging and there's what the brush looks like just your basic natural bristle brush you have to look for this on the bottom of the mascara you know it's usually way at the bottom it's usually four or five dollars I'm telling you guys this mascara is one of the best mascaras I've ever tried, high-end to low-end. It doesn't transfer on me. It builds up the volume and separates the lashes just like um, Tarte Lights Camera Lashes. Uh, it's not quite as volumizing as Tarte Lights Camera Lashes, but very close. Um, that is still my favorite, and this is this is a very close second. Um, I I, re I just love this mascara. I know I I know that I've gone over it over and over and over again, so I won't continue. But if you're looking for a new one to try from the drugstore, now somebody did tell me they looked and couldn't find this in there, so I'm not sure what the scoop is with that. But it's a great it's a great great mascara. This is one that I will grab for particularly when um, I'm heading out of town for whether it's for camping or whether <laughs> I laugh because you know mascara for camping um, but for camping or just for a weekend or whatever because a I know it works B it's not going to transfer on me it doesn't flake on me it's just it's just a good it's an old reliable which is nice because if you ever forget your mascara I can run to just about any store and get it which makes me very happy all right the next one that I want to talk about is the it cosmetics hello lashes extensions 24-hour lash extending fiber mascara it has the little sort of tortury ball looking thing on the bottom of it I feel like I just talked about this in a video but I cannot remember for the life of me what it was about but anyway um, I like this mascara it doesn't build. this is the one that I'm wearing today by the way it doesn't build a ton of volume it does um, add a little bit of length it's a very wet formula. I've had this open for a long time and I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but it's still it's still pretty it's still pretty wet. I don't love that it comes when it comes out it's just a big goopy mess. You have to really kind of work hard to get it off of the like off of the tip of the little torture ball thing. Um, it does stay it doesn't transfer. I will say that it does not transfer. But it's just not my favorite mascara. It's a lot of putsy working with it to get it to kind of work right. Um, it's the I think it's the only mascara from it that I've ever tried. I love all kinds of it products. You guys know that. But this one in particular is not necessarily my favorite. This came in a kit if I remember correctly. But at any rate. So if you like more of a wet formula and you're needing more length and not so much volume, this might be one that you want to try. The other thing is that I'm not sure how I'll be able to show you, but it's almost like a triangly sort of brush where there's a a higher and then a lower and then a higher and then a I'm not sure if you'll if it will come across on camera but at any rate not what I would repurchase again. there's not a lot of ones I would repurchase again in this one except for the drugstore one okay so I'm afraid this is going to be long because I have lots to say about some of these, but the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara, most of you have probably seen, seen, and seen again this one. So it has this kind of rubbery top to it, rubber brush. So again, I feel like this one um, will separate things out very well. It will give you a little bit of added length. It does this is super curling and lifting mascara so it doesn't which makes sense because I don't feel like it builds any volume um, again my my lashes are naturally curly so I don't feel like I'm a good judge of whether it will hold the curl or not so I try not to speak to that too often um, 
I did hear from somebody that it's supposed to be paired with the Benefit Their Real one. I didn't do that because I just kind of wanted to test it to stand on its own. But I like it. I just don't, I don't love it. It did not transfer on me underneath my brow bone, which is always a plus. It just really made my lashes long and separated, but no volume, which is which is not exactly what my preference is. But if that is what your preference is, you might really appreciate this. And if you need a little bit of added extra lift, from what I hear from others talk about, it does do that for you. Again, my lashes just do that on, on their own, so I don't notice that. So, I mean, it's a nice mascara, but just, again, not one that I would repurchase. I kind of, I, I should have I should have maybe kept the CoverGirl one to the end, because that's the only one I think I would repurchase. Okay, so this next one is the YSL Faux Sills, and this actually got in an influencer box. And this one transfers like crazy on me. Has um, a natural brush that's very full. Um, it does come out pretty clean from, um, from the tube. It adds a ton of volume. Does not add much length, but a ton of volume. Um, looks great if that's you know what you're going for. It's a little bit of a wetter formula, um, but like a thick wet formula. And it definitely, absolutely, 100% transfers underneath my brow bone. I had the same issue with the baby doll mascara. I love the baby doll. I, I kind of worked. I, I like this one. I just don't love it like I do the baby doll. Um, so at any rate, and I think I'm going to open a baby doll, baby doll for next the next quarter of mascara. So this one, like I said, will add some volume. It won't separate out. You kind of have to pair it. I definitely had to pair it with the Buxom brush, which I've shown you guys this before. This is the Buxom Lash, this little one that I have. So I frequently will have to pair, let me get this up closer, mascaras with this. Even though there's hardly anything left in here, I just use this to separate things out. Um, so I like that I I wouldn't I would not repurchase this one again I don't think and I've I've given serious consideration before throwing this out to do a comparison video between this and the baby doll so people could see what that looked like so if you're interested in that let me know and then lastly is the one and this actually was a gift from my friend Jamie and this is the Chanel La Volume de Chanel and I have enjoyed this more the second time that I've used it than the first time and. Um, I absolutely 100% have to perish, pair it, perish, pair it with the Anastasia Last, Gen Last Genius because it transfers underneath my brow bone. Aside from that, I love this mascara. I mean, I, it has worked so much better this time than the last time, so I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Um, I definitely open it, use it, and um, then like one day I'll let it sit like this for about 15 minutes and then it works much much better. I think it has to dry out a little bit because again it's a very wet formula but sorry I didn't show you the brush on that. So it looks like that. It's a very interesting brush in that the little bristles aren't very tall on that on it and so you really have to get in at the base of your lash and wiggle it up but it adds a great amount of volume. It I mean it's drama. This is some serious drama mascara. Um, but really, really nice. Um, and again, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I would, if I, if I would repurchase it. I don't know. I, I don't know if I would or not because I'm, you know, it's my goal in life to find a mascara that does everything that I want it to do and not transfer. And I don't know. And Tarte Lights Camera Lashes doesn't transfer on me either. So I don't know. Jury's still out on whether I would repurchase this one or not. I could go either way. I really like the. Um, the look of it, but I just have to work a little extra hard with the clear coat on the top of it to make sure that it doesn't transfer, but I do really like it, and thank you again, Jamie, for it. So, that is everything for my mascaras that I have to talk about. Again, I feel like this one went on a little bit. My apologies for that. On my face today, I have the CoverGirl Stay Luminous, which um, video on this, along with Kirsten, is coming on Thursday. And on my eyes today, I pulled out one of my Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill, and this is the one in number five, which is a really pretty gold. And I used my Tartlet palette to go along with that. I just have Force of Nature in the crease. And then I have a combination of Dreamer and Multitasker um, to deepen up the crease and then also beneath my lower lash line. For blush today, I used my Tarte Exposed, which is right there. And then on my lips, I have the um, Milani in Naturally Chic which looks like that. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for understanding about my week break. I hope that you guys had a really great week and that you're gearing up to have a great week this one. And we will talk to you very soon. Bye.